Hi, this is Eric from MyAnnual.net, helping you understand and manage the annual inspection process. Visit us at MyAnnual.net for more information. Today we'll be removing, cleaning, and replacing brake pads on a Cessna 172. For a list of materials and tools needed to perform this and other maintenance tasks, join us at MyAnnual.net. First, remember safety. Remember your safety glasses and your gloves since we'll be handling solvent. To replace the worn brake pads, first we have to remove the brake pad backing plate from the caliper. There are two 7 16 inch bolts that are held these together. Remove these bolts and we gain access to the backing plates. Then we can remove the backing plates, clean them, and replace the worn brake pads. When we took the wheel off, when we took the bolts out of the back of the brake, the front pad came off. Uh, you can slide the back, the rear caliper out, and this backing plate, the rear backing plate, just slides right off. It's also a good time to clean and check thickness and condition of these pads. Uh, as you can see, this one's pretty thin, and we're going to replace it. Uh, first thing we'll want to do is to clean these up real good. Uh, so that we can get in there and change the pads. As you can see, we've got the brake backing plates off and cleaned up uh, so that we can inspect them. The pads are thin on these brakes, so we're going to replace them with new pads. There's the new pads. A good rule of thumb is think about how much you're going to use these brakes before they'll be looked at again at the next annual. It's a lot cheaper to replace brake pads than it is a brake disc, just like on your car. If you wear the pads down to where they hit the rivets, then you'll probably be replacing a brake disc, which is a lot more expensive. The brake pads on these brakes are actually riveted onto the backing plates. So I'm going to show you how to remove the old pads and attach new ones. As I mentioned earlier, the brake pads are held onto the backing plates with rivets. We're going to drive these rivets out now so they can replace the pads and the rivets with new. This brake tool is available from our suppliers. What you're doing is actually driving the rivet down and out of the backing plate and the pad. and that's driven the rivet out so you can take the pad off. Alright, we've driven the old rivets out, taken the old linings off, cleaned up our backing plates, and we're ready to put on our new linings. As you can see, there's a significant difference between the old pad and the new in thickness. This is the old worn out pad and this is the new one. Now what we're going to do is actually rivet these pads on, we take our rivet, put it through the lining into the backing plate, put it on our brake tool, and I like to take the rivet for the other side and just put it down through the hole so that we make sure that we keep it lined up so that it will go in the other side fine. Now we're going to set this rivet. And we're ready to do the one on the other side. Again, put the rivet through the pad into the backing plate. Onto the brake tool. And you just set the rivet. And there's the new pad on the backing plate ready to be installed on the aircraft. We'll do the other backing plate and we'll be ready to go back. 
Now that we've got the new pad riveted onto the backing plate after cleaning and inspecting it, we can clean up the caliper area. We want to remove any old hydraulic fluid, dirt, rust, and any debris that's built up since the last annual inspection. It's also important to clean the pins on the caliper because they slide back and forth and that's how our braking action works. They slide into these holders right here. Now that we've got the anti-seize compound on the caliper pins, we can slide on the brake backing plate with its new pad riveted on. It should slide easily over the pins and the pin should slide easily into the holder. We put on the tire and wheel assembly and secure it in place with the axle nut. Before you put on the cotter pin, make sure you got free rotation with the tire. The other brake backing plate with its pad attached goes between the tire and the disc and is secured with the two bolts that we removed at the beginning of this segment. We now have the tire and wheel installed, secured with the axle nut and cotter pin. Both brake backing plates with their new brake pads are installed. Both bolts holding the caliper and brake pads are installed. We'll now torque these bolts to 25 inch pounds. If the securing bolt heads have holes in them, we will secure them with 32 safety wire. These do not. We've now removed the brake backing plates, removed the old brake pads, cleaned and inspected the backing plates, and installed new brake pads with new rivets. We've cleaned, inspected, and applied anti-seize compound to the caliper pins, installed the backing plates with new pads, secured in place with the two bolts, torqued them to 25 inch pounds. Make sure you do an operational check of the brakes before taxiing the aircraft. This is Eric from MyAnnual.net, helping you understand and manage the annual inspection process. Visit us at MyAnnual.net for more information and a list of materials and tools needed to perform this and other maintenance tasks.